Welcome everybody to another week of Learn It Live webinars. Obviously, we are all excited about the moves on gold and silver at the moment. So for tonight, we're talking about how to trade gold and Forex during market volatility. My name's Thomas Atkinson, obviously uh, from FX Evolution, as we always do these every two weeks. And tonight we're gonna to be going through all of that and more. Tyrone will be joining us in just a minute as well. So we've got uh, the dynamic duo ready to go. Just a quick check uh, before I read out the risk warning, everybody can hear me. If you can, just please uh, post that in the comment section. I'll just quickly go through this risk warning. The information provided in today's video and webinar has been produced by a third party and does not reflect the opinion of Pepperstone. The information has been provided without any alteration or verification, and it should, of course, be only considered general in nature. Do not uh, make any investment decisions or anything else like that based on this webinar. So when it comes to obviously trading, you want to have basically the best amount of information as possible. And one of those ways is of course, Pepperstone's Telegram group. So if you're not a member of Pepperstone's Telegram group, I highly suggest you do go and join that. It's really good. There's just a nice amount of feed of information about all of the latest happenings. There's like a daily kind of feed of the top five things that you should be looking at that morning. And of course, Chris Weston's and our webinars are posted in that as well. So definitely think about going to the Pepperstone Telegram and the FX Evolution Trading Discord. We've also got our Discord and private Discord communities. So definitely check those out. Really good chat programs to be discussing with other members and other traders. So when it comes to things that we'll be covering today in this webinar, I think it's really important just to cover a few things. We'll be going through live markets. So we'll actually have a look at the live markets and I'll talk about some of the trades that have set up this week, the reasons that they're good in terms of the setups. So you get a bit of an idea, idea I guess, of what we call the top-down approach, where we go through multiple timeframes and whether you're a scalper, a day trader, or even a swing trader, I like all of those types of trades, but you can still use the top-down approach and you'd be surprised how good that is at kind of changing the way that you think about the markets. Everybody starts on the one minute time frame. I'm very well aware of that, I did too. And it's about understanding that where the market flow is and where all of the money kind of flow is throughout markets, when you see from the top down, it'll give you that better understanding. So in today's webinar, we're gonna be talking about how to identify patterns for potential trade setups. We're looking at some live chart analysis of gold, silver, and of course some Forex majors. And then we'll be talking about popular scalping indicators for MetaTrader 5 that you can keep an eye on. And then the live Q&A. So if you have questions throughout this webinar, make sure that you ask them in the room, ask them in the questions room. I'll answer them as best I can or Tyrone will. And at the end, some of the best ones, I'll cover them in a little bit more detail so you can get, I guess, as a community, the most out of it. So one of the things that we want to do, first thing you want to do every single time before you ever trade really is to understand the news events that are coming out for that day. If you're particularly into scalping, you need to be very well aware of the key red news that's coming out. If you're trading a five minute time frame, and let's say on this day, you're trading the New Zealand dollar at 12 o'clock and you weren't aware of what was coming out and they made a rate decision and it was changed, you could lose a lot of money. And you don't want to be that. You could also make a lot of money, I understand. It can go both ways, but inadvertently, it always goes the wrong way when it comes to trading. <laughs> so make sure you have an economic calendar. Make sure you check it every day. And when you're building your trade process, think about adding that to the top of your list. If you don't have a trade plan every day, add that as one of your first things you ever do. What is actually happening today that I know is going to be coming out? Definitely worthwhile checking out. Another thing is, which trading pairs are we going to start with? Well, there's a whole bunch of different ones. Some of the majors, of course, are always very, very popular. Things like odd US dollar, euro US dollar, US dollar yen. It's where most people start. But what about gold? Well, during crisis periods, it's pretty much proven that gold has some extreme volatility and therefore some extreme opportunity. Now with Pepperstone, it's really great to have the ability to trade multiple different gold pairs. We've got gold US dollar, gold odd dollar, gold euro, now gold Swiss, we've got gold pounds. I'm actually gonna go through those live with you and talk about how each one sets up differently. Now, obviously most people will focus on gold versus US dollar 
and that's been going incredibly strong. We're now at over $2,000 an ounce, and that's uh, pretty incredible when you consider where it was only 18 months ago. But yeah, gold, US dollar is only just the beginning. Then there's the cross pairs, and you'd be surprised how they all set up differently and give you as scalp day, scalpers, day traders, or swing-based traders different opportunities. Major crosses, things like Euro, Pound, Euro, Yen, they often can't be ignored, and of course, things like Pound, Dot as well. Now, what type of times do we want to trade? Well, I think understanding the session times is also important. If you're somebody that wants to trade precious metals, it's always been London, usually, that's been good. But I've found that gold has been moving a lot during the Asian sessions. I feel like that has happened a lot over the last couple of years, probably since about maybe 2016, really, uh, when I've been looking at the markets, that's when gold really became a very large trade in the Asian session. And a lot of the big moves have been happening during the day, actually, in Australia. And if you're able to trade those, then that might be one that you want to add to your live charts. You might want to say, okay, let's get in 30 minutes to one hour before the market session opens. And what I mean by that is usually the stock markets open at a certain period. That's usually when you see that big kind of trade volume come into the markets as well. And you want to be in there around 30 minutes to one hour before if you're looking at day trading or scalping. And then understand kind of the key resistance, key support lines, key price action levels, all of those things so that you can have a plan to trade those sessions. So definitely worthwhile considering what you're trading and when you're trading it. To add to this, Monday is actually usually a pretty bad trading day. Now, it's been okay during this volatility time. But when you think about it logically, why is that? Well, we don't have London. We don't have America. They have not opened yet. We only have Asia open. So what does that mean? Well, maybe on Mondays, we could focus on things like gold, focus on things like the yen, focus on things like the odd and other currency pairs that have got to do with Singapore dollar, Chinese yuan, any of those type of things. You focus on those during that session because they're really the only things that are going to be trading heavily with volume, real volume, because those markets are open. So hopefully that does make some sense. Now, if you're losing sound, by the way, a few people may be, it's probably uh, just the web browser. So just log in and log back out and um, or log out and log in and you should get it. So let's say we've gone and we've said, okay, we're interested in trading gold and silver and we're interested in trading the major pairs. What kind of way are we going to trade those? Well, there's two major ways and that's of course trading the trend or breakouts and trading range bound. Now we did a great webinar. I think it's well worth you checking out if you haven't already. And it's on Pepperstone's YouTube channel. So definitely check out FX Evolution and Pepperstone on YouTube. And that breakout strategy basically, uh, well, that range bound strategy was talking about scalping within the range. So that's definitely something that you can do when you actually figure out that you're in a range. And we'll talk about that and how to figure that out tonight. We'll also be talking about breakouts. So breakouts on gold, how are we gonna trade something like that? So let's have a look now at the markets together and talk about the actual move on gold this week and why and how I guess you can navigate these kind of markets because they're pretty extreme. I mean, gold's basically gone all the way to a target we're gonna talk about and it's done it literally in only a few bars. So first thing I wanna mention is that we have a four hour chart here and that we are clearly in an incredible uptrend, incredible bull kind of run going on here in gold, and that we have a multiple touches to the 20 exponential moving average. So that's that red line here. And many people will use the 20, they'll either use the 20 simple or the 20 exponential moving average. So they're very, very popular kind of moving average. We've also got the 50 here that I always get asked about, that's the blue one, and the 200 simple moving average. Now, some people also add the 100 in, some people have shorter time frame ones for scalping, but I do think the 20 in particular, if you don't have this on your chart, you need to get this on your chart. Many stocks in the Pepperstone platform right now have been hugging that 20 on the way up. Many, of course, gold and currency pairs hug this during aggressive trends. So right now we're quite far away from the 20 moving average. We've moved up high. We know that's not unprecedented because it did it over here as well. So uh, if, oh, if you've missed out on some of those things, I'll um, use this crosshair for you. So here we go. And basically, yeah, that 20 red line has been absolutely holding it. Now, what does this look like? Well, it looks like an ascending triangle. We'll put on the resistance that we formed and the easiest way to kind of look at resistance is that what we want to do is we want to try to line up those body closes so a lot of people ask me about this well we want to line the body closes up 
as much as we can and as many weeks as we can around the same area. We also need to think about the zone. So does it make sense that it was probably stopping at 1978? Well, it probably makes more sense that 1980 was the level. It's a $10 price range. It's $20 before the 2000. And we saw the first touch before it sold off heavily at that zone. So when we're looking at this zone, 1980 was probably the major resistance. And that was what we would want to draw as our resistance line. Another thing that we're going to notice straight away is that the market was making a series of higher lows. So basically, we've got a series of higher lows coming into this. And that's always important to note because what's that telling us about the market? Well, it's telling us that the market is continuing to strengthen in terms of the bulls are definitely coming back in. Every time the bears try to push it down, the bulls say, no, 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 there's value here, there's value here, there's value here. And it actually touched it one, two, three, four times. So four times to that 20 exponential moving average on this, uh, this actual time frame here. So then what we'd want to do is we want to say, well, do we have any line that kind of goes across that as well? And we certainly do have a few touches there. And that becomes kind of like an ascending triangle pattern. Now, what do we know about ascending triangle patterns? That they should go the distance of kind of this last two third component. So if we take that, extrapolate that out, it's pretty much calling 2040 as being kind of the first resistance line where you would expect the market to find kind of a, a problem. And that's what we've reached actually just now. So we've reached that just now. And you might be thinking, well, does that mean I take profit? Or does that mean that I get out of the trade? Well, the trade's pretty much still going up. We're in uncharted territory on this particular currency pair. I mean, gold has never been at 2040 before, ever. It's just never been there. So at this point, what you're really doing is you're saying, well, what has happened before that I can predict that may happen again? Well, one thing we know is that the 20 moving average has held it recently. We also know that we have incredible resistance at this kind of 1980. So that means that if the market comes back down to this level, what does that resistance become? It generally becomes support because the nature is you've got one, two, three, four touches at this zone. That means that something about this level was acting as a key zone for big traders, not necessarily us, but big traders. When it comes back down to that level, because it was respected once, it becomes respected again. I highly recommend that you find out more about things like role reversal as it's important in the market. We also know that the 2000 is going to be some kind of key psychological zone. Now, why wasn't it the first time? Because the market stopped just before 2000, kind of coiled and got ready to go and then punched through. So because it did this just before 2000, which is what the market will often do before key psychological zones is it becomes like that that kind of point where the market's coiled the market's broken um the market market's basically going to hit the 2000 but it coils before that because when it busts it it doesn't just go to 2000 it just goes all the way through and people say well why'd that happen it's because of the coiling nature before the key zone so if you're ever looking at a currency pair and it's maybe about to reach a 10 cent mark so let's say it's the odd dollar and the first time it ever reaches maybe an 80 cents or a 70 cents to the US dollar, every time it gets close to those points, usually it'll stop just before, hover, and then actually it'll punch through that zone. It doesn't often just go 70 cents, find support, and then everyone's buying it. Because what do we do as retail traders or as normal traders? We always buy those zones or we always look to those zones as take profit. And the market kind of knows this, so it kind of takes some advantage of these processes. But what will happen now is if the market comes back down from this level, the 20 exponential moving average may end up being around the same point as the $2,000 mark. So that then may act as dynamic support, some kind of support. So then we've got the dynamic support of the 20, and then we've got the support of the actual market itself. And, and this is what you're doing in technical analysis. You're really trying to figure out, well, if I miss what's happening now, what areas can I do? What, what, how can I play chess with the market to try to find these zones? And that, that's one of the ways I guess you can think about it. You can think, well, if it comes back down to this level, then it hovers around on the smaller timeframes, maybe channels on the smaller timeframes and then breaks up above. We know we're in an uptrend, so that becomes quite strong. We go over to other pairs and remember we said Pepperstone offers things like gold versus odd, gold versus euro. 
well, here is gold versus odd. And gold versus odd is a very similar story. Very strong kind of resistance breaks throughout this trend. Very nice resistance break here over that 2,600. And we know the bodies over here happened and then it broke through and then it barely came back. And then just before it broke past the key resistance we're gonna look at here, it continuously hugged that 20 exponential moving average. We had hammers off that zone, we had all sorts of things. So we know that this again is one of those kind of key levels. We go over to something like the daily and we can see that there was a very key resistance through this zone that was broken as well. So what would happen if it came back down to this level? Well, theoretically, it'd be catching up with that 20 here. We would see the resistances of the 2750 become support. And that's again, just a way a swing trader might look at the markets. Now that may be not relevant to you because you're looking at a three minute, five minute chart and you're a scalper, but the same concept can be applied. And we'll actually look at a Forex pair soon uh, to talk about that concept on an even smaller time frame again. So you can see the same thing happens on all time frames. All right, well, let's get back into the slides and talk about some of these things we just talked about. So one was the top-down approach. So of course, with the top-down approach, we wanna start with a high time frame and then work our way down. If we're trading a 15 minute chart, then maybe we wanna know where the one hour is. Maybe we wanna know where the daily is even and the four hour. Now you may think, why do I want to know that? Because if you know the trend of the daily, the trend of the four hour, maybe key support resistance lines on that, and then you can target those zones on the 15 minute time frame. You know that you have all of those larger time frame traders with you, the guys with the bigger money, the people that are pushing the markets around. So that's why using the top down makes a lot of sense. When you recognize, of course, the market range bound, one of the easy ways of recognizing markets, whether they're kind of trending or range bound is by understanding peaks and troughs. So if we understand things like whether the market is making a series of higher highs or not, that makes it very easy for us. Now, it's easy to look at a chart and say, oh, I know peaks and I know troughs, or I use moving averages to tell myself trend. But if you actually read each separated candle and understand, there's one thing that we talk about a lot in our course, and understand what each candle is telling you, and you can read it by pure price action, you'd be surprised how often you find things a little bit earlier and you get that little bit extra of an edge. So if you have a series of peaks and higher troughs, then you're obviously in a trend. If you follow the trend, you'll always hear people say, the trend is your friend until the very end. And you also hear that you know most traders, a lot of swing-based traders, they won't fight the trend, they'll go with it. It's like the stock market. If you go with the stock market in terms of overall, if you bought it and then came back 10 years later, technically the trend will generally be up. So you generally would be doing better than you would have if you had shorted that market during the same time. And that's just the nature of that kind of thing. So some of the ways that we can venture into uptrends is of course, things like ascending triangles, things like double bottoms, inverse head and shoulders and flags. All of these types of patterns are definitely essential uh, kind of bit for anyone really. If you're a swing base trader, day trader or scalper, you want to understand these patterns. Now, I believe that uh, we, we'll probably be posting it in the room in a second, but basically we want to, we have a cheat sheet for this, which shows you some of the patterns that I think are best during these types of uptrends. And you can often, you can just basically go to fxevolution.com slash trading cheat sheet and just quickly sign up there, it's free. And uh, we'll send you an email with with those cheat sheets uh, for the for the patterns. But you wanna know these ones. If you don't know double bottoms or ascendings, you don't more specifically understand kind of the breakdown of each one of these, it's really important to do it. One thing I notice is that head and shoulders in particular are something that a lot of traders don't necessarily correctly analyze. So if you've got a head and shoulder, what are you really looking at? Well, we're basically seeing a low, a lower low, and then of course a change of trend because you've got the low, you've got the high, you've got the higher low, and then you've got the higher high when it breaks through that neckline. But what if your left shoulder is lower than your right shoulder. Is that important? Well, it certainly is because what it's showing you is that probably you're in a downtrend coming into an inverse head and shoulders. When you're moving into the uptrend, if you had a lower right shoulder than left shoulder, that would basically be saying that the market is not very strong in the direction of the change of trend. Remember your idea is that you take all the way from the head 
to the neckline. That's what you want as your profit. So if we've got a very low right shoulder or an equal right shoulder to the left shoulder, it's showing us that the market isn't that sure about this trend. You know, we would prefer that people, it didn't come, it didn't come back at all and everyone was like, oh, I've got to get in. I want to get in. We need to, you know, this is good value. I can't wait. And we've got the FOMO effect and all those types of things. So if you have that, then, then it means that the trend that you're kind of predicting is stronger. So the way you kind of interpret patterns is, is really important. And uh, that's one of the ways you can do that by understanding just the price action behind each pattern. Very, very important. So double bottoms, this is the kind of way that you can break down a double bottom. One of the ways we like to look at double bottoms is we break it down to percentages because you want to be market adaptive. So a lot of people traditionally will put their stop loss a few pips underneath here and they'll get wicked out and the market will do something like this where the market will come down, knock you out and then go in the direction. And there's nothing more infuriating than that. So one of the ways you can do it is you can break down everything to a percentage, break down this pattern to a percentage. Once you've broken it down to a percentage, let's say it's 100 pips wide or a dollar on, on gold or anything like that, you can put a percentage behind and then that allows you to always be market adaptive and less likely to get, of course, hit in terms of stop losses. So we mentioned before trading ranges and being able to recognize ranges. So the easiest way, I guess, to recognize a range is to see a resistance, to see a support effectively, so a high and a low. And then once you've seen that kind of level be touched twice, so twice on each side, then at that point, I feel like you can pretty much say you're in a range. So if you've got that kind of two touches both sides, at that point, you can say, okay, this is in a range and we can trade it accordingly. You can trade in the resistance and the support. And if it breaks, you can trade, of course, the breakout strategy. And we've seen quite a lot of that in the markets recently. So definitely need to understand ranges would be something that, that's very, very important. So that's one of the ways you can do it. You can also understand peaks and troughs and high lows and things like that within the range. It's very, very easy to do. And that helps you kind of understand that the trends are there. But because we know the resistance is here, we should never really be saying, okay, well, I'm not gonna take profit above this zone. You don't know it's necessarily gonna break here. The difference between having the candle closed above and just hitting this resistance is everything. The candle closed above shows you that the market is ready to go to the next direction. Just like we saw on gold with that ascending triangle, we really wanted to see the candle close above. So we'll go back to that and I'll talk to you about what I mean. We'll do that right now. So we'll go back to that gold and we'll say, okay, how are we going to know that the candle closed above? So basically it, it does it here. So we'll zoom in here. And what you can see is, I'll we'll circle this up, highlight this. So highlight the close here. So really this signifies, and this is actually a scary point. And somebody said this to me the other day. They said, so what you're telling me is if I feel a little bit uneasy about taking a position, then that could be the better position. And I, I kind of laughed about it because in some ways, yes, the market is playing a psychological game with us. Would you think that buying at 2000 as you know, normally you come in and you think, well, would I buy 2000 the first time it's ever touched ever in, in the history? You'd think, oh, well, no, why would I do that? That would be the point where a lot of people will be selling. But it's exactly not understanding the fact that the market was coiling before that zone and the market was really saying, well, we should be going to at least 2040 that kind of changes it. So there's really two things that can absolutely happen at at a point like this. Well, number one, that's that's the confirmation. So that's gonna be your confirmation close above the zone. The other thing is, where do we know there's strong support? Well, we know there's strong support at the previous resistance now, which will probably act as support. That's at 1980. So if it comes back down now, there also might be a 20 exponential moving average, which it gives us dynamic. There also is probably gonna be a fib of that move. So we have really two choices. One, we can say, okay, we buy it after the close here and we take it to the length that we believe it's going to go or we get on the trend or anything like that. Or we can say we want the conservative entry. And there's actually nothing wrong with that. If you missed a move on gold recently or you missed this trade, you, you should never be sad about that because really it may just not be in your strategy. Remember, there's a new trade every day. 
and there's a new way of trading every day that you can look at and build into your system. So if you're somebody that always likes the conservative entries and you miss some of these aggressive moves right now, I think one thing you probably need to be thinking about is how has gold reacted in the past to these moves? Has it been explosive recently? Has it been a Tesla in terms of <laughs> moves? And it certainly has. Like if we look at when gold has broken out, we go to this daily and we look at the key breakout zone. So this was a key breakout zone. It's been pretty aggressive. Now here, it gave you the opportunity to come in, but last time it broke, which was just here, where it broke out of a little range, it just went bang. It didn't come back. It went from basically above that 1815 all the way to 1980, and it did so in only a few candles. So by understanding that that's the way it currently is trading, it's shown you twice now that that's the way it's currently trading. Maybe that helps you and your psychology to to look at the breakout zones and to, to look at those keys, key levels. Another thing, you can go to the smaller timeframes in the hour and use confirmation. But I like to always go on the time frame that I'm seeing the pattern. If this is a five minute, I would like the five minutes to confirm above. If this was a 15 minute, the 15 minute. If this was a weekly, the weekly would want to be confirmed above. You want to usually use the time frame that it, the pattern is clearest as the time frame that you basically use as confirmation. I hope that makes sense why you would want that. So again, if you're trading even a one minute, you will want the one minute to confirm. Uh, I do suggest though, if possible, try to get on those five minute, 15 minute and ups because the one minute you're going to mostly, it's not that you can't be successful, it's more that you're going to have a lot of trades and it could hurt your psychology. And I'm sure most people probably at this webinar tonight and just in general have experienced a day where they made some mistakes they weren't very happy about. <laughs> and that can often be attuned to, unfortunately, the fact that you have not necessarily waited for the confirmation, you have not necessarily waited at all for anything, you've just used an indicator and one cross or you've broken your system. So try to always keep it regimented like that and, uh, and look for the close on the time frame that it looks best to you. I think we can so all attest to that, Thomas. Ah, oh, hello, Ty. Welcome. Yeah. 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 Oh, we can all attest to it. Unfortunately, every trader we're... feels the pain at some point, hey? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah, my computer has finally started to work, so I can't see any questions. So Thomas is going to give his best shot at giving any questions and answer, but I'm here to talk. So um, yeah, let's continue. And, and don't worry, everybody. I can assure you Tyron does not have coronavirus. I, don't, <laughs> I know his voice sounds pretty bad, but he's unfortunately, uh, he's a little bit sick at the moment. So um, gold euro, another one that you can bring in. Again, totally different. Yes, they're all in uptrends, but totally different break points, totally different potential scenarios. So here we've got gold euro kind of topped out at 1683, broke through it. I think everyone can see this is a very strong zone. Now you say, well, why would I ignore this wick? I ignore it because there's more body closes around this area. So I think that's very important to look at. Gold pound. Now the pound's been very strong, so there hasn't been as big an explosive move here. It's still been good, and there's still been good patterns and good breaks and everything, but not as good. When we go on to things like silver, well, silver's an interesting one because if we actually go to silver and we bring up the weekly we can see that it broke past an incredible resistance over here and then it just absolutely obliterated this resistance as well and it's just been incredibly strong so silver's one where i guess the biggest caution that i would look at is that when you're trading this pair be careful when you put a position on silver contracts are bigger than you expect so using things like pepperstone's advanced trading tools and using things like the mini terminal uh, would be worthwhile considering because when you trade this, it's bigger than you think in terms of risk. And I think that I've almost, out of training so many people over the years, <laughs> I think Silver usually gets them first in terms of they accidentally make a bigger trade than they expected. Ty, yeah. usually gold or silver, so, yeah. So many times that uh, Silver will bring you undone. Uh, you see it all the time when people are going through their trading results with us um, during our mentoring. There's one that stands out that's a mistake. It's either been closed early or it's a it's a loss that they shouldn't have taken and nine times out of ten it is silver so you definitely be careful of that one i'll answer a few questions here ty that we've got coming in uh, just because i wanted to and i think these are kind of important so one of them is what's the blue ma uh, that's a 50 exponential moving average another one is oh yeah here we go here's a good question key calendar events to consider with gold is non-farm uh, payrolls important it is 
It is. Non-farm payrolls will move gold. Now, gold's interesting. It moves, well, traditionally, it hasn't moved exceptionally off, off anything in particular. It's been moving a little bit now off things to do with the US. Obviously, the Federal Reserve has a big deal in the way that the gold is moving right now and the printing press and all of these things that are going on, I guess, in the economies. So yes, I would think that US news, especially stuff around the Fed, especially stuff around jobs, key economic data like that, you'll want to be looking at. With silver, silver is one of these metals that's actually used heavily. Uh, so it's used actually in a lot of construction. And if you look at a chart of silver, Back, all the way back to 2011 and before that. So look at the GFC, so the global financial crisis during 2008, and then look at the run-up silver had after that point. You can see why it's so explosive in terms of its moves right now. In fact, this level here, this 26, if you go to a monthly chart and you look at that resistance to the support previously, if you had like all the way back data, you'll notice that it's just obliterated a very important area. So it's broken straight through that. Again, Silver's really moving very heavily away from a few things that I think are key. Whenever you see something go parabolic like this, just remember there will eventually usually be a pullback where it will start to range and it will usually catch up with the 20 exponential moving average. So if we're on a daily and it's this far away from the daily, like it was down here during the crisis, it will eventually start to kind of par like you know range off and then the 20 will catch up with it and then that will kind of at least needs to touch this it's kind of like mean reversion isn't it ty it needs to eventually get back to this 20 but that doesn't mean it does. that it does yeah. it today yeah yeah and it's probably important to note too like it's been a long long time ago that the 20 actually crossed the 50 moving average and it's been skyrocketing ever since now that doesn't last it, it, it never does so yeah, you would expect at the very least that it's going to come back to the 20 at some point because it does need to catch up to its to its mean. But look, it was back yeah around the $15 when it actually crossed. So that just goes to show how long and sustained this trend has actually been. But yeah, just not long after it did cross, you can see all that consolidation on the 20 and how much it respected it through that period right there until it actually mm -hmm. broke through and broke that serious resistance in front of it. So it's got a big respect for it. It's had its big run now, but you know, the next anticipated move you would think would have to come back to the 20 before it really shows too much more strength because the market has to level out at some point and you can you know, totally rely on the 20 to pull it up. And that and that goes back to how far away are we from the 20 here on gold as well. We're, we're quite far away on gold, US dollar. So a few people are asking where, where to now for gold. Well, I guess it, it really technically hit its first area in terms of what an ascending triangle would say. What's gold been doing? Well, it's been gravitating to 50s and it's been gravitating to 100s. So, and usually just before those kind of zones. So it's been over here, we had that 1750, it found resistance multiple times. If we look underneath that, it's kind of hit that 1700 for a smidgen and then sold off and that became the resistance. So gold does like trading to the 50s and the 100s. That's kind of the areas that, that are usually expected. But as you saw, when you have big moves, it will sometimes just stop just before and then start consolidating. So really what you're looking for as a trader is you're basically saying, well, what's going right now? It's it's difficult to predict when, uh, when you should be getting in here. Like, should I be buying it here? Well, probably not. But if it comes back to key zones and you need to recognize those zones based on previous things like this 20 exponential, maybe that then becomes worthwhile diving into the smaller timeframes, seeing how it implements on those. Maybe the 15 minutes got bullish hammers on it. It's got the double bottom on it. It's got all of those things and it's all at the four hour 20 exponential moving average in the direction of the trend. Well, guess what? That becomes an opportunity for you as a trader to look at. So, and then you can take the kind of small amount past that. A few people are asking, where would you place stop losses, Ty? Well, if you're taking something like this, ascending triangle, you place it around this point here, you place it under the last swing. So if you're taking the buy, you'd have to place it under the last swing because that's the nature yep. of these types of patterns. And ascending triangles do make fantastic risk reward trades because you do often get that fairly tight stop loss and the move mm. is obviously two thirds of what we're looking for of that ascending triangle. So you generally get, a, a quite often it's three or four to one, which is a great risk reward ratio. But yeah, it's like anything, yeah. when a market's in a, un, uncharted territory like this one is, it generally gravitates to those round numbers. And we say the 50 and the 100 
because they are the most obvious. But when the market is a little bit uncertain on to where, where it's going to go, like nobody can predict exactly where this is going to go now um, because it's it's never been here before. But generally when a market is uncertain, it will gravitate to those big round numbers or those key zones. So it stands to reason that, you know, being where it is, you would think that the 2050 is probably going to be the place where it's going to find a reasonable amount of resistance before it either pulls back and gives us another entry point or it gravitates back to the 2000. But I could imagine now that the 2000 will probably become a very, very important zone in the future. It took it a long time to break, uh, but now that it has broken it, you could probably rest assured it's going to be a very, very key zone moving forward for both support and resistance. So here's some types of strategies that traders might use. So you've obviously got things like channel breakout strategies, moving average trends with role reversal. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, like Tyron was saying, the moving averages. And then if you get a role reversal at the same point, like we mentioned on gold, then they become better zones, they do. Another thing is indicators. People love indicators, obviously, and well worth looking at many of them. I actually think that one of the best things to do is to keep a naked chart where you basically have just the price, you draw up your key support resistances, you kind of analyze it that way, and then you bring in your indicators. It's one of the things we talk about in our course all the time, Ty, is we, we bring in the indicators, we bring in the stochastic, we bring in the MACD, uh, all of those things. Um, and by the way, if possible, Ty, could you post in the in the room, if you've got access to the chat, uh, post in the room just the cheat sheet for a few people as well. The role reversal here is something that you want to know. Obviously, role reversal we've covered in so many webinars, so check out Pepperstone's YouTube for that. But before we go into the market and use a top down on the odd US dollar, because I want to talk about a really good trade that happens time and time again that did just happen and is that you don't want to be FOMOing. So try not to FOMO. This gold market, I know it's hard. If you're not in it and you hear from somebody, hey, I made $15,000 or I made 1500 or whatever whatever they're saying, it, it, it can hurt your psychology and it can make you make a mistake. Remember, ultimately, you are the person that's trying to succeed and whether it's gold today, it was Bitcoin a few years ago, it's the NASDAQ at the moment, or whatever else it might be, there's there's always another huge move around the corner that you can trade. Yeah. There always is. It took Most me a while definitely. to realize that. It's, yeah, it's always better to wait. Now, I haven't actually got access to the chat room, so you might um, post that in for everybody, Thomas. But what I what I will say about patterns is a lot of people say, you know, do you trade gold differently or do you trade silver differently to how you would go about, you know, currencies or or the stock market, but in actual fact, especially this year or the last 18 months, probably in particular, gold has been technical perfection, really. It's been it's had so many instances where patterns have worked out perfectly. Ascending triangles, head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders. It's really respected the indicators. And I think it's because it's become a very, very tradable uh, commodity now, like a lot of people trade it and trade it very heavily. So once that tends to happen, you do get to see a lot of these patterns actually play out because at the end of the day, technical analysis is history repeating itself. And when enough people are seeing what you're seeing, and that's the whole idea, like we, we always advocate the fact that you, you're probably, some people say, yeah, you, you don't want to trade with the herd and you, know, you want to be doing what everybody else is not doing. But you know, what, what we really actually try to emphasize is there's nothing wrong with trading with the herd as long as you're doing it for your own reasons and you see why you're doing that. That's the most important thing because if you're trading with the herd because you see it going up but you've got no other reason other than the fact that there's um, you know, a lot of people doing it, that's the wrong way. And that's what Thomas is talking about when you're getting a fear of missing out. But if you see a pattern setting up um, and momentum is in your favor, then that's a double blessing because that's what you really want to happen in the market because at the end of the day, it's momentum that pushes price. So don't ever be afraid to trade all the technical patterns that you love, uh, that you trade in currency inside of gold, oil and, yep. and silver and all, all of the things there because they really do work and they work very, very effectively. So I'm gonna do a bit of a quick top down. I'll make this quick just so you can see something that you might wanna approach. And we're gonna start with a monthly. I know, crazy, right? <laughs> some probably, some people probably haven't even loaded a monthly before and I know, I know why. The reason you wanna do this is you just wanna know key kind of resistance support lines. And usually you go to like a line chart or something and you might see a zone. So it was clear to me and it's clear to a lot of people that this resistance and support at 70 cents on the odd, being a 10 cent as well, was a key zone. Then when we go down to the weekly and notice how the resistance 
that would happen before, which was support, which was resistance, became resistance again. The odd actually sold off from this point, but that didn't change that we were in an uptrend. It did something very similar. And the reason I brought it up is because what happened, we saw a series of higher lows, just like in gold. Now, obviously gold wasn't on the daily, but this is the same style and the same pattern. And it's the same concept that happens time and time again. Again, could be five minute, 15 minute time frame. It, it works the same way on all of those. Now, when it broke through here, it became obviously very, very strong in terms of the buy. We know that we'd be taking that kind of two thirds and that would be where we'd be looking at doing it. But when we go down to the smaller time frames, we go down to a four hour and we have a look there. And then we go down to a one hour. There's a trade on this one hour that I want to really mention because this is one of my favorites. And that is that we have closed above all of the resistances in terms of the dynamic moving averages, 20, 50, and the 200. Price has moved up. What would a lot of people probably be screaming at me right now? A little bit of an inverse head and shoulders pattern here. And when we get through, we get a clear confirmation break. We get a clear retrace back down. We have a bullish hammer or pin bar, as some people call them very strong kind of little you know candle confirmations there all coming off the smorgasbord of dynamic supports being all the moving averages sitting in the zone very difficult for the market just plug through these there's a lot of people that use these moving averages and it's hard to get through so you got all three sitting there and you've got all of these things going in the direction and you've got a very clear zone resistance so this is the type of thing where you do the top down approach and you'll go through and you'll have maybe opportunities, maybe the opportunity was on 15 minute, same concept, same layout, same kind of uh, trade. So very, very nice there on the odd. It's always important to remember that the more things that you can put between your entry point and your stop loss, like moving averages, roll reversal zones, all of anything that you can throw in, in between them, the safer your stop loss is going to be because you're making price work a hell of a lot harder than it normally would to um to get to your stop loss and that's what the whole idea try to get as much as possible between your entry point and your stop loss and of course as little as possible between your take profit and your entry point ideally you have really around three to six reasons to be in a trade and one of them you'll always find comes down to trend so that's why when you're looking at silver when you're looking at gold when you're looking at a major currency and a lot of them are trending right now if you were trying to fight that trend, unfortunately, you usually will lose um, money. And that, and whereas if you went with the trend, which often can be the harder kind of concept for people to do, it's like when you always say, okay, I'm gonna use pending limits, I'm going because I can get cheaper price. But how often do you ever use stop orders, buy stops or sell stops? Now, they're not necessarily the best type of order, but most people do not use those. In fact, they don't even look at them because they don't know why would I wanna buy worse price. It's because of confirmation, because of market flow, because of understanding those dynamics. So we always wanna look for conditions like non-farms. This week is big non-farms, obviously the Friday, the first Friday of every month, we have at the non-farm payrolls in America. And usually the Friday is actually pretty slow going into it. It's been traditionally like that, but there's always fireworks during that time. Should you trade those times? Probably not. You can get whipsawed a lot because of the nature of the news, but they're always good to understand and watch. And I think if you've never seen a big economic event and live in the market, sometimes just going to a five minute and seeing how crazy it can become shows you the risks of really doing that type of thing as well. It might, it's kind of becomes more the gambling than the statistics and the likelihoods and all of those types of things. It so very exciting. Have, well, I, know, I don't mind, I don't mind looking at it, but it doesn't yeah. mean I'm going to touch Good it. Good to watch, <laughs> very nerve-wracking to be part of. Definitely one of yeah, those ones that you just want to watch. Absolutely. We want to have, of course, sound risk management strategies. Whenever you're taking trades, sometimes there's going to be something and you go, oh, I, I know it's going there. Technically it says all of these things. Problem is the reward to the risk doesn't necessarily make sense. Never move your stop loss just because if you take profit, it's it's just not worth it. Uh, now, Ty, we are we do have um, some people have asked us about the course, and we do definitely have a course at fxevolution.com. We've got a private trading group, and we've just opened up a concept which is a seven-day free kind of access to it. Now, that access you will technically need to put in, you know, payment details, but you won't be charged till after the seven days, and you can of course cancel at any time. So, if that's something that interests you, then definitely check it out at fxevolution.com/slash 
um, or just go to fxevolution.com and click private trading group or trading group up the top. Now, Tyrone, basically we've got some great questions here I want to answer. And I also just want to mention a few things. We do have a survey at the end of this webinar. And if you can fill it out with your thoughts, obviously if you enjoyed the webinar, let, let everyone know at Pepperstone. We want to try to do as much as we can to make sure your experience is best and you learn things. And if you got a bit of a tidbit of information out of this that you think is relevant to your trading or helpful, then uh, of course, let us know as it helps us, of course, make more great webinars for you. Now, I've got some good news, good information here in terms of questions. Do you avoid non-manufacturing PMI? Does it make big move? So generally, actually, those kind of things don't move the market as much as you think and you could skip them. The problem with this, the nature of this crisis and the nature of the volatility with the VIX above 20, and didn't mention the VIX too much tonight because we talked about it so many times, is that anything can be moving the market if it's off from what the economists think. Uh, generally speaking though, it doesn't move it as much as you think. Yeah. If you're trading a 15 minute time frame, you need to be careful of all of it. If you're trading a, a day trade with a 50 pip stop loss, it's not going to affect it as much. Uh, do you have this session recorded? Yes, we do. And yes, it will be on Pepperstone's YouTube channel tomorrow. And I believe you also get a follow-up email with it. Uh, what kind of indicators would you say are good? Well, I think stochastics always really popular. Moving averages are good. MACD is good. RSA, RSI is very good. Some people are saying RSI is very high on the gold US dollar, should I trust it? Another misconception is that people think that if an indicator is, let's say stochastic for an example, if the stochastic is overbought, so we'll draw it, I'll show you. So let's say we've got our stochastic, there's our you know 80 zone and we're basically tapping out at the top. The trend's up, the stochastic can stay here for a lot longer than you think. It can stay there for a very long time. I always it's encourage very, very people to go have, go have a look at an uptrend or a big big move and look at how long the stochastic can stay up there. That will pretty much prove to you that you can't necessarily use that indicator <laughs> to sell it down. Same with RSI. As, as a general as a general rule, oscillators like the RSI and the and the stochastic oscillator are far better, you, I will far, they offer far more information when you're trading a sideways market or at a market that's not really uh, trending heavily. When they are trending heavily, they can go very, very deep into overbought territory or even oversold territory if it's going down. And the RSI is no different. So it becomes a lot less reliable in a very heavy trend. So very, be very mindful of that. That's the one that probably brings a lot of people undone because they try to fight what they're actually seeing on the screen. They see you know, basically stochastic is flatlining on top at nearly at the 100 zone and um, they'll fight it every time they look like they see a ne negative candle. It can punish you very, very heavily. So you gotta be very, very careful about trading oscillators in the uh, in a trend because they can stay in the overbought very, you know, for a long, long time as can RSI. So th to answer that question, yeah, they can be very unreliable in trends. Got a question here. Is it safe to assume that gold US dollar follows the same trend as the NASDAQ 100? No. <laughs> it will not usually follow the same trend. Um, no. In fact, they're usually not even linked at all. But at the moment, what's happening is, of course, you've got a huge amount of monetary policy that is pres pressing kind of on gold. And then at the same time, you've got the NASDAQs obviously running out of control because of that monetary policy. So they're, they're kind of unlinked, but they're linked at the moment, if you know what I'm saying. Like, I wouldn't say they they trade the same way. There's been plenty of times where the S&P 500 is, goes down and generally gold will go up or the NASDAQ will go down and gold will go up. But right now we're seeing a bit of a unique circumstance. Uh, there's a whole bunch of questions about different things <laughs> here. So look, we can't answer every one of these questions just because uh, we, we do need to go to another webinar and obviously we've run out of time today. If you're interested in coming to the other webinar, I've posted, we do one after this where we go through live markets. I've posted the link in the room already and that's uh, definitely something you can check out. If you've enjoyed today's webinar, please let Pepperstone know. As I said, there was a, there's a question at the end, so make sure you answer that. And realistically when it comes to trading any of these markets right now just remember always have a plan and always try to look at the idea that you're in a trend and you want to follow that trend 
and you just look for consolidations, breakouts, and things that have that have happened before that make sense to you. If it doesn't make sense, it's probably not worth doing. So that's something I guess I'll leave everybody with. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, uh, we will hopefully see you in the next little bit at the next webinar. Or other than that, we will see you in two weeks' time. But don't forget, fill in those surveys so we can get them. Uh, we can basically make the most out of every webinar that we do and try to accommodate everybody's needs. So thanks so much for taking the time to join this webinar, and we will see you very soon. All right. See everybody. Thanks very much.